Welcome to Electron Online, and in this example, we're going to show you how to take an equation that looks like this, which is a quadratic equation, and find h, k, and p, and then grab the equation. And there's two methods to do that. The first method is we can take the equation and make it look like this, and then find p, h, and k in terms of a, b, and c, the coefficients of x squared, x, and then the constant. And then the second method is we can take this equation and put it in the standard form like this, which then automatically will give us h, k, and p. So we'll do it both ways. We should get the same answer. And then we'll go ahead and graph it once we find h, k, and p. So first we're going to take this equation and make it look like this quadratic equation in this form. So this equation can then be rewritten with y on the left side and everything else on the right side. So this becomes 2y is equal to minus x squared minus 2x and minus 7. Notice all we've done here is taken the x squared, the 2x and the 7 and written on the right side and kept the 2y on the left side. Now we need to divide both sides of the equation by 2 to get rid of this 2. So we get y is equal to minus 1 half x squared minus 1x minus 7 over 2. And there's the quadratic equation in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we can see that p, the distance from the vertex to the focal focus, or from the distance of the, the vertex to the, di the directrix, can be found by saying that p is equal to 1 over 4a, which is equal to 1 divided by 4 times, in this case, a is a negative 1 half. So that means that this is equal to minus 1 half. So p is equal to minus 1 half. Next, we find h. h can be found by saying that it's equal to minus b over 2a. So it's equal to minus b is a minus 1. And 2a is equal to 2 times a is right here, minus 1 half. So minus times a minus is plus, And 2 times minus 1 half is a minus 1. A 1 divided by minus 1 is equal to minus 1. All right, so this is h. And finally, we want to find k. And k can be found by taking c minus b squared over 4a. So this is equal to c. c is right here, minus 7 halves, minus b squared, and b is equal to 1. So that would be uh, minus 1 squared divided by 4 times a, and a is minus 1 half. All right, simplifying this a little bit. This is equal to minus 7 over 2, and so this is 1, and this would be, hmm, let's see here, 4 times 1 half would be 2, that's a minus 2, a 1 minus 2 times a minus, that's plus 2, so that would be 1 half plus 1 half, which is equal to minus 3. All right, so now we have values for P, H, and K then we would go ahead and graph it. Before we do that, we're now going to use our second method, which means we're going to take this equation and make it look like the standard form. To do that, we have to notice that this needs to be a binomial squared. That means that this needs to become a perfect square. So we're going to rewrite this equation. We write it as x squared plus 2x plus something. We'll leave a, a space here. And then this is equal to, bringing this to the right side, becomes minus 2y, because we want y on the right side, and minus 7. Okay, now the left side needs to be a perfect square, so I take half of this coefficient, square it, and add it to both sides. So this becomes x squared plus 2x plus half of 2 is 1, square that, I get 1, so I add 1 to the left side, and I'll, yeah, I will add 1 to the right side. There we go, so we add a 1 to both sides which means on the left side I have a perfect square. I can write this as a binomial squared, so x plus 1 quantity squared, which means it's an exact same form as that. So this now becomes equal to minus 2y minus 6. Now I have to make this look like that. Okay, I'm going to factor out a negative 2. So x plus 1 squared is equal to negative 2 times y plus 3. The reason why I factor out negative 2 is because I wanted a y without a coefficient. So whatever the coefficient is, just factor that out. So now you can see that y plus 3 is in the same form as y minus k. In this case, k will be minus 3. But now I want to make this look like that. Okay, so one more change. So x plus 1 quantity squared is equal to, I need 4 times something that will give us negative 2. So 4 times a negative 1 half 
will give me negative 2, so that's the same thing, times y plus 3. Now you can see that I have this written in the standard form, which means I can read off my h. My h is going to be the negative of that, which is negative 1. My k will be equal to negative 3. And my p is simply this number right here, p is equal to minus 1 half. So you should see now that I have the same values for p, negative 1 half, for h, negative 1, and for k, negative 3. So since I got the same answer with both methods, I'm probably correct here. Now I can go ahead and graph this. So first of all, the vertex can be found by finding hk. So the vertex is equal to hk as coordinates, and so h is equal to negative 1, and k is equal to negative 3. So that's my, my vertex. So x negative 1, k negative 3, 1, 2, 3. So right here is my vertex, the point negative 1, negative 3. All right, now I want to find my, let's see, how about my focus? My focus is equal to h and k plus p. All right, that means it's equal to negative 1, and k would be negative 3 plus p. Notice that p is minus 1 half, so it's negative 3 minus 1 half, which means it's negative 1 and minus 7 halves. All right, that's the position my focus. So my focus would be right, this is negative 4, so it would be right there. That's my focus, and let me write it here, negative 1 and negative 7 halves, which is negative 3 and a half. So that's my focus, and there's my vertex so that you can see the difference. All right, now I need my directrix. My directrix has the equation y equals k minus p. So for my directrix, my equation is y equals k minus p, and so it would be minus 3 minus a minus 1 half, which is a plus 1 half, or minus 5 over 2. All right, minus 5 over 2, that's right here. So this line right here would be my directrix at y equals minus 5 over 2. So I have my vertex, my focus, and my directrix. So you can see that my parabola will look like this. And again, to help us visualize this, you pick any point on the parabola, and you can say that the distance to the focus should be the same as the distance to the directrix. And that's how we define it in the standard form. And here's the two methods that will give you the exact same result. Again, both methods allow you to find P, H, and K. Whatever method you prefer, it doesn't matter. They allow you to graph it using the standard form. That's how we do that.